Hey everybody, this is Professor Klein back in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University. And if you could tell by my different attire, the Hawaiian shirt here, it is spring break in Athens, Ohio. You can see the sun shining back there. Not so warm, but it is spring break. But the grind does not stop for the YouTube video. So I'm bringing you a video today on Roll call. All right, so with the vertebral column here, let's focus in. There it is. The vertebral column is really all the vertebrae that make up your vertebral column. Now, vertebral column is different than the spinal cord. The spinal cord is deep inside that vertebral column, and there are these yellow spinal nerves that branch out of the vertebral column. But when we say the vertebrae, we're talking about the bones right here, not the nervous tissue. So with that being said, we have a lot of them. I'm gonna step back and zoom out so you can see this whole stretch of them here, even all the way down to the pelvis. But if I come over to one here, we can see the first seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are what are called cervical vertebrae. Cervical vertebrae, I'll give you a 360 of those. This is not a vertebrae, this is the hyoid bone, so don't let that throw you off. But the top seven are cervical. They're real small, and here's a look at one individually. Here they are right here. And in fact, there's two special ones. We've got C1 right here, which is called the atlas, which looks like this. And we've got C2, which is right here, which looks like this. And then all the other ones have a very similar style to them and format, and they all look like this. Now with the atlas, I've got videos on all these specifically, but just covering a few bony landmarks. You can see what's called the posterior arch, the anterior arch, the, so you can see the transverse foramen right in here. Sorry, the foramen are the holes. The transverse processes are these bony structures that stick out to the side. And really that's a distinguishing feature of the cervical vertebrae, all of them, even C2, if you look here, has what are called transverse foramen. Transverse foramen. And if we look here, that's the artery going through here, which is called the vertebral artery. It's going through the transverse foramen. And really, this is a good point to make that the C1 vertebrae, the atlas, articulates with the skull. And if I flip it up here, you can see it articulating at the occipital condyles. Check out the video on the skull if you want to know all about the skull and the bony landmarks of the skull. But back to here. If we're looking at C2, the axis, main thing to mention is this big bump on the side. This big bump right here is called the dens. That's the dens. And that actually allows C1 to sit right on top of it. Let me move it into the proper position here. There we go. And sit just like that. Underneath it would be, let's call this C3. Yeah, this can really be anywhere from C3 to C7. C3 to C7 with this type of vertebrae. This one has to be C2, the axis. This one has to be C1, the atlas. But you can see the vertebral body, the spinous process, transverse process with the transverse foramen. Now in the middle, we just call this a vertebral foramen. So this hole that's forming here, let me put them all on top of each other so that you could see what the first three vertebrae would look like just like this. Let 
Here we go, just like this, and it forms this long canal that we call the vertebral foramen or the vertebral canal where the spinal cord would go. So my probe right now is representing the spinal cord. All right, enough of these. Let's get up to the thoracic region here. With the thoracic region, we're looking at the next 12. So I actually put a piece of tape up here to differentiate the first seven from the next 12. Look at those 12 right in there. Those are the thoracic vertebrae. I'll kind of give you a nice side angle of them here. Coming down, thoracic, one through 12. I'll just give you the other five that make out the final section, and this is the lumbar section. One, two, three, four, five. So how do you remember? Cervical is seven, thoracic is 12, and then lumbar is five. Well, what I teach my students is you have breakfast at 7 a.m., you have lunch at noon or 12, and then you have dinner at 5 traditionally, right? 7, 12, 5 are the main three meals of the day. So hopefully that lets you remember or helps you remember 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, and then 5 lumbar, breakfast, lunch, dinner. But back to here, what you can see are some differences. One, the thoracic vertebrae are larger, much larger in size compared to the cervical. And notice how the spinous processes, they get much larger as you go down to the thoracic region. Much larger spinous processes in the thoracic region. And if I bring it around the front, we've also got the ribs in the thoracic region, right? This is a thoracic cage or the rib cage. And if you look real close all the way through, bring the probe up and under. There it is. You can see the ribs articulating with these thoracic vertebrae. So they're gonna have something special for the ribs. Let's take a look at this vertebrae. Bam. All right, here you can see all the different types of vertebrae. We've got the thoracic in the middle now, cervicals over here, lumbar, I got one over here as well. So one, two, three, wait a minute, what's this extra one here? Well, I brought this one in, this is a thoracic, but I want you to note the difference between, let's say T1 through T6, which would be something like this. It's got a smaller vertebral body, it's got a longer spinous process, and it just looks a little bit different. Now both these in the middle, and I'll kind of touch them together here, both of these are thoracic. They're drastically different from cervical with the transverse foramen, and drastically different than lumbar that looks over here. But there's this, there's this slow transition that occurs as you go down the thoracic region. And watch this with me, watch the spinous processes get shorter and shorter and shorter and then you're in the lumbar region so there is a gradual transition for these vertebrae now sometimes this is described as a heart shape see how it kind of forms an indent at the top kind of like a heart shape to the vertebral body the lumbar they say is more of a kidney shape more of a kidney shape, larger vertebral body, shorter spinous process, kidney shaped. The other thing they say about the lumbar, and this one's tougher to see, I'll hold it up like this. They say it looks like a moose. Can you guys see the moose right here? Let me put up a picture of a moose. They say if you look at it like this, it looks like a moose. But all right, enough with thoracic. Let's go to lumbar, the biggest, five lumbar, and we can see the lumbar vertebrae right here. This vertebral body is huge. The vertebral foramen, it gets a little bit smaller in comparison to the rest of the vertebrae. 
as the other ones are larger compared to their size. But with lumbar, it's all about stability. So think about the weight of the entire upper torso, head, neck, arms, everything being put on the lumbar region right in here. So this is the lumbar region with the intervertebral disc in between. These are huge because they take up a majority of the body weight right on those vertebrae. So you gotta have big, strong lumbar vertebrae. All right, now don't forget, Professor Klein, that you told him you would tell him something about the ribs and the thoracic vertebrae. And really what we're looking at here is down in the transverse process, transverse process, there is this little notch or this little facet area. And those are called the costal facets, costal facets here. And if I zoom in, you can see the ribs are articulating with the transverse processes of the thoracic vertebrae, right? So this little first part that connects, you got the costal facet on one side, you got the rib on the other side. And you can see the ribs, 12th rib stops at T12. Those were the first three main sections, but I gotta tell you about the next two, the final two sections of the vertebral column because there's actually 33 vertebrae on average in the vertebral column. But wait a minute, seven plus 12 plus five equals 24. So where did the final nine vertebrae come from? What's well, down in here, and this is the coccyx and the sacrum. So co coccyx is this last part, sacrum is this whole part here. These are bones, but they're actually fused vertebrae. So the sacrum is gonna be one, two, three, four, five fused vertebrae, five fused vertebrae, and the coccyx, aka the tailbone, is anywhere from three to five, but on average, four vertebrae there. So take 24, add five, now you got 29, add another four for the coccyx, and you get to 33. All right, this has been your video on the vertebral column. Thanks for watching.